Here we are again on the streets of Edinburgh with these wonderful buildings that were built in the 1500s and 1600s. And this is just a, a scene I, I snapped as, as uh, we walked down the street. And uh, these two sort of tall obelisk type structures really took my attention. So how do we draw a scene like this and how capture the, the, the stonework and just plan and plot our drawing of it? Um, the important thing to notice is that there is quite quite extreme perspective because we are so close to it. It is a fairly uh, steep angle going away from us, the, the actual building, and that creates stronger perspective lines, particularly as they get higher and higher. With that yellow line there, you see me just plot where eye level is. Eye level is actually higher than where the people's heads are because the ground is sloping down and I'm actually on a higher level. So that's just something to be aware of. Don't assume on a street scene like this that eye level is the people's heads. And of course, it's important to plot that so that we get our perspective lines correct. And even though in this stone building, it's, it's not courses of bricks that are all exactly the same height. It, it is stonework, though, that roughly follows horizontal layers. And so roughly it needs to follow the perspective line. In fact, it was probably even harder to plot, I think, than if it had been brickwork. But uh, I, I, I probably take a little too much care with it um, in the sense that uh, I, I fuss a bit too much and, and I think I overworked uh, just above the archway, the, the stonework. But, but generally, I feel like I've captured the, the stonework well and that sense of different sized pieces of stone kind of put together and a fairly rough and ready um, style of building with with some dressed stonework for those corners on each side of that triangular uh, upper part of the wall. Now with this part of the wall that's closest to me it's really important that there's a significant increase in size of the stones I draw and that our perspective lines start to widen quite a lot because um, that's all in accordance of course with the way perspective works and as it gets quite close to us these the gaps between the perspective angles um, increase more and more and so we, we to help get a sense of depth that that this is coming towards us and moving away from us it's really important that we get the scale of those stones correct so now I um, continue with these obelisky structures I had great problems with this um, look at that it looks like it's falling backwards it's a terrible job and um, I'm doing the rest of it thinking, you know, how am I going to correct this? So I do do a, a little correction. You can see the correction I do there. I actually do a, another correction when I put the tone on. So make sure when the tone's being applied, you pay attention to see how I actually move the top. No, I don't move the top, but I, I, I make the right hand side a little bit um, wider. So it's not leaning back so much. I take a lot more care with the second obelisk structure. And now I position the details of the adjoining building, uh, referencing off what I've already drawn. So that's all fairly straightforward. And now there's very significant stone work uh, where the courses of stone are very easy to see, very prominent. And so I want to I want to capture those because that's they certainly convey a lot of the feel of, of this scene of this fairly fairly rough um, stonework. And now I'm really just getting the rest of the street, which again, because of the steep angle, is uh, very, very foreshortened. So the important thing is that I, I really do a tight foreshortening of the buildings as they go down the street. Even though they go a long way out of sight, um, once we get past these next two buildings, we almost see nothing of any of them. And so I, I want to draw them with a lighter touch. And I want to make sure that while I include just enough details to make them look like buildings that um, I don't overwork them. So I put these people in the foreground because they're very important for a sense of scale and, and to give us a sense of it being a street. And also I, I don't have any reference anyway for how the bottoms of the buildings look. And uh, that's that's often a weak, a weak area in drawings such as this where the, the buildings hit the ground and often we're tempted just to do a, 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 straight, lo a straight line fo following whatever perspective angle is down there and uh, that's that's never a good move because that's not how how buildings finish into the ground and when I get a good reference photo I'm going to do a video on that 
But um, for now, I'm, I'm just continuing with these, these figures and again, the, the, the head's um, getting them in the right spot. And then we're just about ready for the tone work once these buildings are done. Now it's time for the tone. I look at my uh, tone color chart that I've made for Copic Sketch Marker Neutral Gray. I'm using N2 to N5 uh, markers on this. Only a tiny bit of N5. Uh, for most of it, N4 is, is the really the darkest that, that we see and um, N3 is a fair bit of that too. I actually take that obelisk uh, shade over the line that I've drawn to establish a new line and that I think works better than what I've drawn with the line. Now of course uh, all of this section is in shade and so I just basically apply uh, a fair amount of tone initially and then I use uh, darker pens to um, to pick out the stones and the fact that the stones are darker than the mortar so I want to leave some some mortar lines just to give an indication of a, a lighter cement there and also to indicate the age and the weathering and the I dare say pollution on on these stone blocks so I'm, I'm doing that and, and this is where I spend most of my my tone time is, is really just picking out these stones and working back and forth and getting a sense. It's important to stop and look back and to keep asking yourself, is there enough variation of tone? Do I need to increase the dark somewhere because I, I've gone a bit a bit too much with one color? Since we can't go light, the only thing we can do is to go darker to increase variety. So I, I go down the end of the street, just doing the fronts of the facades with a lighter tone, just to give a sense of distance moving away, of things being further away. And and then I add that window, which I think would have been better if I'd left out. It would have um, just sh um, highlighted those two triangular um, shapes better without without that window being put between them, even though it was in the reference photo. And and the the people, and then the shade on the street, of course. And again, just just looking at my picture, looking at my reference and working out what needs to be done. I should have put more tone on the street, but overall I think it, it, it came up looking okay. Hi, I'm Stephen Travers. Stonework is a great subject for us to draw because there's so much opportunity for us to develop our own particular way of representing what we see in life or in the reference photo in our drawing. And because of that, it's, it's a great way for us to help develop our own drawing style, our own drawing technique, the way we translate life or a photo onto paper using whatever pencil, pen, whatever wash, whatever we're using. And so so because of that, I think it's, it's a particularly useful thing to really work at, but also because there's so many great stonework buildings that um, it'd be a shame not to be able to do all of these subjects. And I'm going to go off camera now and put some more darker tone on the footpath in front of those buildings because having had another look, it's just too light. It, it doesn't kind of blend in well enough and it doesn't work. And it's always important when we finish our drawings to, to go back to them and have a look and say, okay, with a little bit of distance, what would I do differently? Or what can I change now? And with tone, that's one thing we can easily do, add more tone. It's a very important part of developing as an artist, critiquing our work in a positive, helpful way to build ourselves up and give ourselves a focus with our next drawing. And um, yeah, I'm still doing that. And I hope it's something you work into your practice because it's a very, very positive, helpful thing to do. But whatever you're drawing, stonework or anything else, the important thing, of course, is to have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.